Yep, yep. Stand back behind those trees. I'll come up here with your knife. Her brain is right here. Okay. Oh boy. Ah, way too long. Let's go. Come on. I need to take my time. I don't want to rush you. Yeah, we harvested dear old Flossie. Unfortunately, we cannot, we are not allowed to show that on YouTube. It's against the community guidelines. Um, can't show the blood, so we can't show a lot of the processing even. I'm gonna show you what I think I can without causing any trouble. That's what this video is, but to give you a little bit of content, well, if you wanna see the whole thing, uh, if you want to see the whole thing, shot, blood, and all, you're going to have to go watch it on Abundance Plus. Right now we have a free trial, so you could technically get in there, uh, watch the butchering, consume the new sh couple new shows of Elevated, and whatever else you want for the seven days and just cancel before it picks up. Most people actually don't. 75% of the people who get the free trial actually enjoy it so much they stay on. So, AbundancePlus.com. Anyway, for Flossie... You know, homesteading hurts sometimes. We don't talk about that a lot. I talked about this at Homesteaders of America at one of my talks. We talk about the glory. We talk about the good. But with every single thing, there is a good side and a bad side, a blessing and a curse. Even with a tree, something as holy as a tree. You know, beautiful, shade, uh, spiders for fly catchers, uh, birds for fly catchers, rubs for animals, firewood, uh, siding, a framing for houses, it's so good a tree. It can fall on you. Uh, you, you could uh, get burned in a fire. A tree, even a tree, can it can fall on your house. Even a tree can become a curse. So one of the curses, downsides of homesteading is the harvest. I mean, I mean that's a perfect example of uh, everything is a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing. Uh, you're feeding yourself, your family, but it's a curse and that something has to die. So, um, and cows particularly, especially family cows that you've milked, I've had my head, you know, I'll purposefully, you know, I want to get that microbiome exchange. I'll purposely lean my head on these animals and milk them. And I'm milking them by, I'm, I mean, I'm milking them by hand in their nether regions. How, how much more intimate can you get than that? Except for this. I'm laying my head on, the, on this cow. I'm milking and then I see this bump. I see this movement. It's the calf moving. I can put my hand up there and feel the calf. These are intimate moments with these cows. There was a particularly difficult incident with our first family cow after coming back from the Great American Farm Tour. Her name was Violet. Well, she failed to thrive. She would, uh, she would, eat this fescue, which is in plenty. It's a kind of grass that grows here in Western North Carolina and in many places in the East. She couldn't handle it. Her particular build could not handle fescue. So it's what you call fescue toxicity. And as a result, she wouldn't come back into heat. So she had had a calf, we're milking, but she needs to cycle. She's not having her cycle so that she can be bred back, have another calf, and we can keep getting calves and we can keep getting fresh milk. You know, once they have a calf, their milk production goes up, but then it gradually starts going down. And you need to give them a break, let them breed, have another baby, and uh, you're back in milk. And she just wasn't doing that. And we had to make the hard decision, and we probably waited too long, six, six months. And, you know, it's, it's what you call, what the farmers call being open. And that is one of the O's for being uh, cold. Open, ornery, which was flossy, and old, which was also flossy. She was certainly not open. She was uh, very quick to get bred back, and we appreciated her for that. Uh, but anyway, Violet, we had to make that hard decision, and she was our only family cow at that time, and perhaps that's one reason we've gone to two, in case, so, mainly so we have milk all year round, 365 days a year, but two, in case something happens to one of them. So it happened that we had to call her. And I wasn't confident enough in my shooting skills for it. And you wanna get that right. There's only like this big of a window to shoot them. And if you miss, which I've missed before, uh, you know, they start bleeding out the mouth, they start running around crazy. Uh, it's just stress on them. And you don't want those adrenals to go and taint that meat. So, um, we hired a guy. 
and he came out and I was bold enough and to, to watch. Uh, Rebecca wanted to watch. I remember we had our Great American Farm Tour bus, Maple, there. And this cow, cow was so calm, that was a good thing. We could just halt her, pull her up to a tree and get basically point blank. And Rebecca came around the bus to watch and he pulled up that gun and she turned right back around. It was just that difficult. These family cows, they're extra special for us and for people who get them. You spend so much time with them, there's such a height of provision and it's hard. It's like losing a dog. And it, we lost a dog that day and she shed blood, we shed tears and it's okay. Now we go into Flossie and I've got more animals under my belt. I've shed tear over Buddy the sheep. Flossie now, because you know, we were calling her because she was old and ornery. The ornery part, you know, you get uh, uh, kicked enough times, you're ready. You know, head, head butted, I've been head butted a number of times. I've got a few scars from Flossie. Yeah, you know, it got to be where the kids couldn't even handle her. You know, I wouldn't want them to handle her, so. That one, I mean, it just wasn't so sad. I mean, it just wasn't. Uh, and I don't know if that comes with time or, you know, they say, t if you've been farming long enough, a farmer has two happy days. Once when the livestock come, I should make sure this is recording. It, it is. And once when the cat, that'd be terrible did the whole speech and it wasn't even recording. And then once when the livestock leaves, so two happy days for the farmer. So it was a happy day for us. We had a harvest. Yes, we, we loved and appreciate her love in the sense of the word of laying down our life for her. We gave her the best life we could, moved her every day, uh, treated her if, if, we shot, if we thought she got ill, uh, get, got her in clean water, gave her time between uh, the end of pregnancy, letting her rest before she had another baby. And we harvested her. And I'm learning that she lived, but now she still lives in a different way. And now, you know, it's, um, it's been three weeks and we've gotten it meat back. You know, they like to hang the meat for three weeks just to tenderize it uh, before they cut it up. And they cut it, the butcher cut it up and they brought it back. Or we went and got it back. And uh, I've noticed we're calling it flossy. You know, we're not just having ground beef tonight. We're not, we're, we're not having beef. We're having flossy. And, uh, you know, for some, that just may be too fresh. You know, that's just too fresh. <laughs> that meat has a name. But for us, it's special. And we've named our steers, and we like to name them exotic names like bear or moose, and we'll, we'll tease guests, we'll say, we're having bear tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, now we're having Aunt Flossie. We're having Aunt Flossie for dinner tonight. It's Taco Tuesday. So, do you see what's happening? Flossie has been reincarnated and is now living in us, like through us, in a very literal sense. We're eating her flesh and then living and so she lives on certainly in our memories for a while the meat how was it the meat was uh you know i lost the audio when we actually took it and i had my review but uh here it is we'll play it and um it's very red an older cow is tough so i had most of it ground into hamburger i did save the chuck roast that's very rich it's, you know it's very very rich in beef flavor it's not my favorite it's not as good as this young beef Angus steer, you know what I mean? I gave them suet, which is beef fat, to put in the burger because I knew it would be lean. And now it's probably, even with that, it, it only brought it up to maybe a 50, what we're used to, like a 15% fat ratio. I'm used to a 25% fat ratio. It's hoping to get it up to there. It's not quite there. It didn't burn in the pan. It had enough fat to just throw it in the pan and cook it. But um, I do hope to get some more suet and try putting more fat in there and just bringing it up to my liking. I will say this, we haven't had to feed it to the dog. We've had experiments where we put liver and heart in the thing and then it's just terrible and we have to feed it to the dog. We've had experiments where we didn't do anything to it and it was just too lean uh, and it went to the dog. So third, third chance here, at least we're eating it. I'm gonna add a little bit more fat, uh, but it's delicious and special that we know our meat and can call our meat by name and in respect to her really and uh, she lives on in our, in our memories and in our flesh 
All right, if you guys wanna see the knit and gritty of what I did capture, Abundance Plus, free trial, uh, I'll leave the link for that down in the description.